take on this. So, so have you ever read? I don't know. Do you know Paul Graham, by the way? I do. Um, not like, have, we're not best buddies or anything, but I do know of him. I've met him. Yeah. So he's he from Boston, a, right, or Cambridge? Cambridge. Yep. Yeah. So you guys know he, one another. He wrote a blog post back in 2008. It was October 2008. So this is like right after the the crash. And it's it's just if you go to paulgram.com slash bad economy um, is the name of the blog post. And he makes this case where he goes, the economic situation is apparently so grim that some experts fear we may be in for a stretch as bad as the mid 70s, which is when Microsoft and Apple were founded. And as those examples suggest, like a recession may not be such a bad time to start a startup. But he, which you've heard before, but I thought there's one interesting part where he goes, I'm not saying it's a good time either. The truth is more boring. The economy doesn't matter much either way for, for a founder starting a startup. And I actually thought that was a really good point because I hear this so much. It's like, I'll talk to kind of young founders and they listen to Twitter and they listen to podcasts and they listen, you know, they listen to kind of these, like a lot of it's like, you know, VCs who are, you know, also pandemic experts and also, you know, ma you know, macroeconomists <laughs> as well. And so they hear and then they, they sort of start to adjust their plans and their mental models and like their room for everything. And it's like, dude, if you're a startup, you're like an ant in this world. Does the ant care what's going on with the presidential election? No, like you basically just need to build a product. You need to carry a little piece of dirt. It's like build a product, get a customer, get 10 customers. Like it doesn't matter if the if the economy is bad. If you can't get 10 customers, it's not going to work anyways. And so I thought it was a great little blog post talking about like kind of starting a, a startup during the downtime, which is where I think we're about to, or we just officially entered a recession again. So yep. uh, I was curious, Darmesh, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, so my position is I, I lean more towards kind of the uh, Paul Graham end of the spectrum, which is I think it's either neutral, that it doesn't matter, it's uh, one of the things you're suggesting, uh, towards positive. Um, and the positive elements of being in a, a, a kind of downturning economy or recession is that uh, things become available that would not have been available to a startup before like talent. Um, it's like, oh, well, there are people sitting at Meta, Facebook, or sitting at Google right now that may be reevaluating their lives, or they may have just been let go from a venture-backed uh, company that raised 200 plus million dollars, right? So now you've got this um, talent that's coming on the market that might not have come on the market before. Uh, things that were super expensive, like buying Google AdWords or certain marketing channels, because you have this glut of money and a glut of venture capital. Um, you know, I think of venture capital as a very efficient machine of turning like money from LPs into Google AdWords revenue, right? That's, uh, they're just a conduit between the two. Um, and as in a, in a downward economy, you're gonna get less of that kind of glut of money flowing in, which drives the cost overall down for certain things that I think are important to entrepreneurs. So I'm, I'm generally net positive that a down economy is actually a relatively good time to start a startup. For like the last 18 months, or you know, whenever like the last 24 months, whenever things been booming, I've, uh, my wife works at Airbnb and uh, you know, I've got a lot of friends that work at Hub, obviously HubSpot and all these, and Sean was at Twitch. So we have like some, some perspective on how, on the salaries of big companies. And I've seen some of these salaries and they are crazy, 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 crazy. As the, as like a leader and uh, the biggest shareholder of HubSpot and you like see these, see these numbers, are you thinking to yourself like this, like we can't afford to pay someone like an entry level person, $250,000 a year. I don't know how this is going to work. Like what, what's your perspective on that when, when these salaries are going so high and now it's like a little bit normal, more normal? Yeah, but as a, as a startup, I mean, you can't afford those salaries anyway, right? Unless you're one of those kind of rare exceptions that has 50 plus million dollars going out of the gate, which is uh, very, very rare. And so, you know, a, one of the things a founder has to kind of get good at, it's convincing really smart people to do this irrational thing, which is join you in your startup, right? And if you can't, if you can't do that, if you can't make that sale, which is the most important sale you'll make is being able to kind of attract people and then it's customers, um, it's not gonna work. So you have to do one of, you know, two things, um, either recognize kind of superstar talent and give them something they can't get um, because it's beyond competence. It's like, oh, you'll learn more here. Oh, you're gonna do your own startup someday. This is the place to get your startup MBA because you'll be exposed to a bunch of things. You'll meet your future co-founder of the company, those kinds of things. Um, either you have to do that or you have to say, I'm going to be really good at identifying diamonds in the rough, people that have not made it uh, to the 200 plus, 300,000 plus dollar salary yet, but they will someday. I caught them early in their kind of evolution. And so I can get them. There's that's So it has to be one or the other form of arbitrage. Otherwise, you, you, you can't play the game. That's just not, uh, I don't think it's viable. I, I, 